Thank you very much, and hello everyone. Today I'd like to start off with a short saying, and it says, it's just a bit of advice that I was given. Change happens if you want it to or not. I learned the quicker you try and align yourself, the quicker it takes to make a success of what happens around you. My journey has been just that. From leaving the sporting world, and as a sports person, my manager that I had at the time, and she still manages a little bit of me, believed that I had values, and believed to build me through my values. Now, we didn't build something that wasn't me at all, so that was an important task for us. I didn't have to change anything, I didn't have to do anything different. So, from that perspective, I was proud. And in my sporting career, I used to train eight hours a day towards the end of my career, so it was very difficult to have a balance. Everyone says you must study to get anywhere in life, um, do sport, go out with friends, etc., etc. And unfortunately, I wasn't really able to do that. Now, I also come from a family that believes in working hard. And my family also said that, you know, just give everything. You need to rest and you need to train. So I never really went out with friends. And when I actually tried from swimming, I pretty much had nothing. A lot of people say you earn a lot of money. Um, unfortunately, that's not really true because you actually pay for yourself to go on tours as well. But I had no friends because all my friends had stopped saying um, or stopped asking me to go to things. I hadn't studied because I really didn't have the time. And the time meaning I tried, but I was physically not there for an exam. So that I missed out on the exams and I could do rewrites, um, but I was actually not there for the rewrites either. So a few years ago when I went to university, there was no sort of difference or, or grants for sports people. Um, sports people, because they're not here or they won't be able to you know, attend lectures, I did want to catch everything up for myself as well. So I'm giving you a little bit of background as to where I come from a little bit and, and also it will explain this to my entrepreneurial road as well. So I have this brand. And when I tried to leave the sport, people saw me as the swimmer. It, 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 I retired in 2012, it's now 2018, and when I walked down the road, people see me as a swimmer. And even though I'm prepared to be something else, and that was a dream, I wanted to be successful in business as well as the sport. So I wanted to have two lives, and that was a goal I had from a little goal already. And this is, this is still a challenge, it's a big challenge for me because I'm ready to move on but people haven't forgotten, and they don't see me in any other role. I retired from the sport in 2012, and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to move into business. And I had a few mentors that said to me, but Natalie, you need to carry on with a little bit of swimming, a little bit of sport, because that's how people know you. You can't just try and leave the sport. And unfortunately, I tried that, and it took me three years to find a job. I was given an opportunity by one lady, and here I talk about opportunities, and when I was a little child growing up, I didn't really understand what opportunities were. What is an opportunity? It's just something that comes along and you say, you know what, it's a good idea, let me go for it. And that's what I saw as a child. Growing up, obviously, I realized that the opportunities, and you weigh them up and say, is it worth it, is it not worth it? But not being in a job for three years was challenging, because at the end of the day, you don't go out, you don't meet people. The fact that you don't meet people, you don't get opportunities. The fact that you don't get opportunities, it starts a vicious circle. So I had to put myself together and I had to go out there. And this lady gave me this opportunity in reputational management and crisis management. Well, I realized that public relations was not the thing for me. Phoning people up and asking them for interviews was not what I wanted to do because if they used an excuse and said they were busy, I apologized profusely and put the phone down and never phone back. And again, that's just the person I was. But I had to learn who I was. I was a swimmer for so many years of my life. And leaving the sporting world, the mentors always say to you, but you're a success. You can be a success in so many places. But what is success? Can I define success? And I couldn't. I had no idea what it was that made me successful. I didn't think I was successful because after so many hours, after so many challenges, yes, we were able to achieve, but those achievements were because we put that effort in, we put that time in. It wasn't just about me, it was about the team that worked. So in this business, I, was, I got into trouble every day. Um, I was at 
work at six o'clock in the morning. Um, I started early when nobody else was there. And most of the time I left probably six o'clock in the evening, seven o'clock in the evening. And it almost was almost two years. And I remember someone, a mentor, saying to me, Nahi, just stay there. We have been through that. We have experienced it. There are people like that. There are leaders like that. You have to be there for reasons you want to be there. If it's learning, if it's growing, if whatever it is, you must find those reasons to be there. Be there for that reason. And eventually I was ready to leave, to leave and I left. I had no idea where I was going to go, what I was going to do. And uh, I sort of decided I was going to carry on my studies. So I'm studying at the moment, which has been very challenging, but I'll come up to that. And I started studying, and then I found an opportunity to start in social. Now, in the reputational management company, I actually started and took over the social from a business that was doing it for the reputation company. And I was doing it myself um, for the company, plus the communications, plus the PR, plus quite a lot of things, and took on a lot on. And so I decided, you know what, I know someone in the communication sector, and let's try and start the social media there. So this person is actually more in Africa, and I started the lady here in South Africa in terms of the PR, the communications, the social media, etc. One of my passions is actually training, and I'm not very good at getting things going. So I've got all these brilliant ideas, and I'm sure a lot of you know that many people have these brilliant ideas, but to get them going, I sort of struggle because I have no idea how to put this plan together. So as opportunities I speak about come along, I've managed to do an incubator course, I've managed to do a few of those courses and, and really take a lot of lessons with me. Now, I moved into this communication space and it's been tough. It's been tough to find clients and purely because I really struggle to sell what I do. And that is one of the biggest challenges because the small company cannot sell itself and sell actually what it does and how good it is. They call it the, what did you call it, the small business sort of syndrome, that you're just the small business. But in actual fact, you in competition with one of those, all those big companies out there. So I realized uh, quite a long down the line that actually I should have tried to find the money. Even though I didn't have the finances in the beginning, I should have found the, found the person who would be able to actually execute a plan or start the plan. Um, because I thought that I could do it. I thought I had to learn these skills. I thought I had to grow these skills. And months later, I actually realized that it was not going to happen. So we're going more than 18 months down the line, and finally we found someone, and it's really taken legs. So if there's one lesson that I can share with everyone about being an entrepreneur, is don't think you can do it all. You should be able to understand every single part of the business be it the finances, be it the training, and whatever's, you know, the, the smallest person at the bottom, you should understand all the work that is being done within the business. But don't think that you can do it all. Don't think that you as one person can actually take this business and make it fly in every aspect. So a hard lesson to learn, and uh, I know that through our incubator course we were told that Generally, after 18 months, if something hasn't really taken off, you should leave it and say, you know, it's not going to work and move on. But we know it's going to work because all the signs are there. We've done the research, we've done questionnaires, surveys, etc., etc. So we know it's going to work. And again, I realized that I needed to stay within my passion because trying to sell to someone that I can do something other than something is really tough. But if I have the passion for it, it makes it that little bit easier. So through the communications business, we were struggling a bit and another person came to me and told me all about cryptocurrency and what cryptocurrency does. And I fell for it and I love it. I'm extremely passionate about it. And we'll be bringing out our own product in May. We're actually developing a coin for sport. And funny enough, it's since 2012, I have come full circle and now I'm going back into sport. So again, listen to your mentors, listen to people that give you advice, especially if it's advice in areas that you're not quite good with. And I find this passion, and, and as I said, we, we're going to start this project. But now, I have two businesses going at the same time, which is challenging because in the sports business, I have to bring in ambassadors. So I'm the development officer, 
And again, it's time. It's again going out there, putting yourself on the line, and just thank goodness I know a few of the athletes. So it makes it that little bit easier. Now, in the time that I was a swimmer, if I had actually gone out there and met people, and I knew exactly the path that I wanted to take, life would have been a lot easier. And yes, I'm now 34, and I always say that I'm pretty much 24 years old, and going through everything that a 24 year old is going through. So I'm studying, I have the communication side of the business, and mostly the training side, because I realized that's where my passion is, and it's okay to give the rest over to someone else. You don't have to constantly manage it, constantly you know, be on top of it. Um, just understanding what's going on, be cc'd on emails, etc, etc. I then took on a few other roles. And roles are sitting on a board, um, and I also sit on three commissions. And again, they're all sport. So it's funny how life takes you through communications and back into sport. I think I learned a lot through business, I learned a lot through not trying to be in sport. Um, I realized that if people don't want to see you in any other role, it's very difficult to change their minds, and you have to find a way in which to do so, pretty much like selling a product. So life is a little bit busy. As an entrepreneur, it's challenging because you don't always have the funds. The funds don't come in every month as if um, you would work in a business and you promise these funds, and then you know some of it has to go to a different sector. So uh, challenges, and very challenging. But I think at the end of the day, it is a course that I chose to take. It is a course that I think swimming had taught me enough lessons to take me on this journey. If you had asked me if I'd been an entrepreneur a few years ago, I had no idea what an entrepreneur was. I fell into it, people put a name to it, I still don't really see myself as an entrepreneur because I work every day. I go through challenges, I go through obstacles, I go through very much positive, I get to help people, and I don't see myself as that entrepreneur. You've got to see yourself as that big business that's going to go out there and compete. And at the same time, you have to grow and you have to live from it. So entrepreneurism is, is really tough. And I know in South Africa, they're trying to promote it, they're trying to grow it. It's a really amazing thing because ultimately it's yours. It's your ideas. It's what you want to put out there. And ultimately it brings a lot of good, a lot of happy to one's life, a lot of success to one's life. I found out what my mentor was saying about success and what makes me successful. And that was perseverance. To have tenacity and perseverance is everything in the entrepreneurial world. You are up against other small SMEs, other entrepreneurial companies, and you have to stand out. And sometimes, even if you stand out, you still win the choice of But you have to keep going. You have to keep up ahead of the pack, and you can't be too ahead of the pack, as we realized with the cryptocurrency, because we had this product that was amazing, but people didn't understand it. Because people were scared of it, they kept away from it. So we had to stand back again and had to see what was happening out there, still be ahead of the gap, but incorporate what is still happening. So entrepreneurship is a word and it's an actual thing. What defines us as entrepreneurs at the end of the day? And it's just a question I want to throw to all of you. What defines you as an entrepreneur? What will define you as an entrepreneur? What makes it different? to you working in a business? What makes it different to you studying or playing a sport? Because as life took me along, or as life went along, I realized that there's pretty much no difference. Just extra time, extra hard work, but at the end of the day, you're working for yourself. I want to end just by a short saying, and it says, always remember you are braver than you believe stronger than you seem, smarter than you think, and loved more than you know. And that's by Winnie the Pooh. As an entrepreneur, you need to keep remembering those words because you really just want to be Winnie the Pooh and you've got your head in the honey pot. Every day, those challenges, you feel like putting your head in that honey pot. Remember those words because they're the ones that will keep you going. Your friends will keep you going. Those people that believe in you will keep you going. You're not alone. Thank you very much.